Hey, this is Anthony, aka Earthcry, from the Seed to Stage YouTube channel. The folks from Ableton Loop invited me to create some inspiring springboards for today's music making challenge. The challenge is to make a track using only samples from the Polish Radio Experimental Studio Pack. We'll just call it Prez from now on. Here are some ideas of what you can do with the pack. I should also mention that this challenge is open to anyone using any DAW, not just Ableton users. Okay, so first of all, I made a beat with a drum rack, just using samples from the percussion part of the pack, just to keep our time so we can know where we're at. First thing I want to show you is this simpler bass line that I made. It sounds like this. Basically what I'm demonstrating here is that you can take any sample from the sample set and play it as an instrument. Just create a new MIDI track, pick a sample, drag it and drop it down here, and now you have a playable instrument. So let's create this from scratch. This is the sample that I used. I'm just gonna drag this into here, and it's gonna make a simpler appear. Okay, so then what I did is the playable area, I made the end really short, just this section right here. Already sounds kind of like a bass. Next thing I did is I turned on loop, so now, this, now the sample will loop this section. But I kind of wanted a smooth sound, so the way that I did that is I made it so the loopable section is shorter, and I also faded the ends and beginning of it so that you get more of a repeating smooth sound. It sounds like this. Okay, now another thing that I did is I grabbed a utility because you can hear some of that low material is off to the left channel. So what I did is I clicked that handy bass mono sound and now we get more more of a centered bass sound. And the final thing that I did was added a little bit of overdrive just to get it to be audible. So there you go. There's a bass line using one of the samples from the pack. Something else I want to show you is that I can use warping modes and clip automation to create interesting background layers. I'm going to go ahead and make a new audio track. I'm going to listen to some of these samples. That's a pretty weird one. So I'm going to grab this sample, I'm going to stop everything else, and what I can do is change the warping mode to texture. And now I'm going to edit the segment BPM to be extremely long. And by doing so, we're going to start hearing the separation of the actual grains of the audio. Let's go ahead and make this a little bit longer. Maybe we'll repeat a section like this. And let's just listen to what happens. That's pretty different. <laughs> so the next thing we can do is click on the grain size. And now what I want to do is click on this Show Hide Envelopes box. Now you can see that clip grain size is available in our envelopes. So if I double click on this, I can make some changes to this over time. Let's listen to that now. And if I make the grain size a little bit shorter, we will hear a dramatic effect. That's pretty wild. So something I can also do is make this move around a little bit. So now we get... And now this can be used as a background layer with everything else going on. So in the next example, I used Ableton Sampler to create a string of random samples. Check it out, I'll just play it by itself. Here's the beat with it. So let's create something like this from scratch. I'll start a new MIDI track and I'll grab a sampler. Something you can do with Sampler that's really interesting is you can click this button right here that shows you your zones, okay? And what we're going to do is we're going to go into our sample list here, and we're just going to grab some random percussion sounds. I'm going to click the first one, and then I'll click the last one, and just drag them all into this section here. Now if I click on this SEL button, what comes up is what's called the Sample Select Ruler. 
If you have all the samples selected in blue, you can right click and go to distribute ranges equally. What this does is if I move this ruler around, I will play different samples depending upon where the ruler is. Right? So let's go ahead and we're going to drag this back down now that we have this all set up. And we're going to make a new clip. I'll stop the old one. And I'm just going to make a string of 16th notes. And the next thing that I'm going to do is go into the zone area again and just click on this bar. What this will do is that when I look at the clip, it will show me the clip automation for the sample selector. So now what I can do is see how it's on 14. I can drag it down to zero and make it cycle through all the samples in a random way. So I'm just going to play it by itself. And as you can see, we've got a string of random samples. What I'm going to do now is duplicate this and I'll turn this off. I'm going to turn off some of the notes so we can get somewhat of a rhythm going. Okay, so now that I've got this rhythm, the next thing I'm going to do is show you that there are global features available for all of these sounds together. There's a global filter and a global envelope. So now that I'm looking at this view, I can go to sustain and turn sustain all the way down and then turn decay down a little bit. So now I get these more percussive clicky kind of sounds. And now it's very quiet. So the next thing I'll do is I'll add a handy overdrive and just get a little bit of that top end back in there. And maybe a utility just to turn it up a little bit. Let's go ahead and play that with our beat. And as you can hear, I'm using a groove. So what I'll do is I'll apply that groove to this clip and now we have a in time rhythmic backing track. That's nice, almost like triplets. Okay, so in this next example, I have a simpler with a loop in it, and I have the warping algorithm turned on. Let's go ahead and listen to what, what's going on here. So let's go ahead and recreate this sound. I'm going to make a new MIDI track. I'm going to grab that loop, and when I drag it down, I get a simpler. And in this case, because this is a loop, if I turn on loop right now and I turn off snapping, I get the whole length of the loop. So now this is a playable loop. But as I play it up and down the keyboard, you can hear it's going up and down in pitch. So I wanna use the warping algorithms and what this will do is when I turn this on, it will now play the loop the same amount of time, regardless of whatever note I'm playing. The next thing I can do is I can turn down the envelope amount for this. This is how the transients will be treated every time a transient happens. And if I turn the mode to just off or this direction, it will just play this envelope amount every time there's a transient. So now we get. This kind of works for me, but these transients are kind of sporadic. To, to mitigate that, I decided to go with dividing these transients into 16th. So now what it will do is every time there's a 16th note, it will play this envelope of 30. And so the next thing that I can do is I can play a melody because I have this mapped to the keyboard. Or in this case, this sound. Obviously, I also put a little bit of Ableton Echo to get kind of a dub sound going on this, this loop as well. Okay, in the next example, we're gonna use Granulator 2 to make some chord stabs. Check it out. Okay, so I'm gonna make a new MIDI track. I'm gonna go into my Max for Live folder and grab a Granulator 2. I'm gonna to go to my samples and drag the sample that I used into Granulator 2. And now when I play the keyboard, it's going to just loop the section that I'm looking at. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of select this whole area and I'll turn up the spread so I get a bunch of different grains happening over the stereo field. 
The next thing I'll do is I'll turn the spray up a little bit so we get a little bit of variance. A little bit of chorusing. The next thing I'll do is I'll turn the spike up a little bit so I get some shorter grains. I'll now go to the second page, turn on the FM and turn the amount up a little bit. The next thing I'll do is I'll, I've noticed that there's some really, really grainy top ends. I'm going to turn that down a little bit by filtering down. There's also a lot of low end in there, so I'm going to get a high pass filter and set it just right. And finally, I'll add some more of my dub delay. And then I get the sound. Okay. So in this final example, I'm using Ableton Wavetable to use some of the samples that we find in the Prez sample pack to create another bass line. This is what it sounds like. Okay, so I'm going to grab a new wavetable, drop it into a MIDI track. I'm going to go down to these Prez samples. And the really good thing about Wavetable is that regardless of what sample you drop into it, it's going to re-pitch that sample to be in key. So let's just pick some of... Some harmonic content is what we're looking for. That could be good. So now we have... Okay, and for the second oscillator, let's try another sample. That could be good. So now I have two samples stocked into Wavetable, and so the next thing I'm going to do is use the matrix and the LFOs to sweep through the ranges to get some movement going. So the first thing I'll do is turn up the position for the first one. Okay, and now to get some movement on the second one, I'll click on the parameter I want to automate, and then it will appear in the matrix, and I'll just add a little bit of it. Now what I'd like to do is get these LFOs running at different rates and get them running with the clock. So I'll click on this sync switch and I'll change the rate to maybe just one beat. The second one, I'll do the same thing but maybe make the rate a little faster. So now I've got this moving sound. The thing about the sound though is that it's not very, it's very thin, it doesn't have any low end. So I'll turn on the sub switch and turn up some of the tone so we can hear it. Now, because Wavetable has pitched this in key, I can just copy the clip from my original bass line and paste it here. So now we get... So the next thing I want to do is use Envelope 2 to kind of create another modulation target. And what I can do is I can take this envelope too and map it to the frequency of my filter. So the first thing I want to do is kind of get that uh, quick closing of the filter sound. So let's get that envelope two going to filter frequency. Let's see what this sounds like. Kind of a lot. There we go. But this has completely removed some of that really nice top end. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to change the filter mode to parallel. So now we have two different filters acting upon this sound. And the next thing I'll do is I'll add a high pass filter. And now we get... But I'd like the high pass filter to move as well. So I'll add a little bit of this envelope action. But the opposite direction. All right. And then finally to get a spacious kind of sound, I'm going to turn the unison mode on and I'll select the shimmer mode. And now I've just add a little bit of a mountain, a couple more voices, and I'm going to get this wide bass sound. Add a little more sub. Okay. So the end result is this.
I hope you have fun with the challenge. Thanks for watching.